When most people think of a moving sidewalk, they tend to think of some futuristic concept in science fiction. Others might think more realistically of the moving walkways in airports, meant to make carrying heavy luggage easier. Well, both are correct. Moving sidewalks have been around longer than you would think. The first moving sidewalk was over 1,000 meters long and stretched across Lake Michigan. It debuted at a World's Fair in Chicago in 1893. People rode on it as a tourist attraction to get good lake views. The idea of a moving walkway captured the public's imagination from there, and various iterations and experiments led to commercial versions that can be found everywhere today. Let's look at this first moving walkway and see how the idea evolved. Today, we discover the history of Chicago's lost moving walkway. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. This story really starts at the World's Fair in Chicago in 1893, which was called the World's Columbian Exposition. It was in celebration of the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival in the Americas. In order to host this event, there was a competition between the largest American cities to determine which one would have the privilege of playing host. Chicago managed to secure the rights by being one of the largest railway centers in the country. The city also promised to provide $10 million in funding. The World's Columbian Exposition's layout differed from most World Fairs before it. You see, it followed the example of the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition in 1876 by having a large layout spread out over multiple smaller buildings instead of just being hosted in one giant hall. The exhibition took up 600 86 acres of land in the southern lakefront area of Chicago, in an area now known as Jackson Park. The fair was planned by architect Daniel Burnham, the chief designer was Charles Atwood, and the lead landscaper was Frederick Olsted. The World's Fair's architecture focused heavily on an exterior classical style. The fairgrounds were nicknamed the White City due to that clean, classical look. The White City was also considered a marvel because it was lit up at night with electricity, which was still a novelty at the time. The first time electricity was introduced to a public audience was just four years earlier at the Paris Exhibition. So the lights of the White City and the exhibitions at Chicago's World Fair were most Americans' first introduction to the concept. The World's Fair's opening ceremony had U.S. President Cleveland press a button to activate an Alice engine. The engine was a revolutionary design displayed by famous electrical pioneer George Westinghouse. When the button was pressed, it powered on the entire exhibition. At the World's Columbian Exhibition, electrical marvels were the main attraction, and one of those displays was our lost moving sidewalk. Surprisingly, this wasn't the first moving sidewalk meant for a World's Fair. You see, French engineer Eugene Hennard wanted to prototype and present a moving sidewalk for the previous Paris exhibition in 1889. He even submitted plans to build it, but they fell through, meaning the electric moving sidewalk at the Colombian World's Exhibition was the first to make it past the drawing board. Made by Joseph Silsby and Max Schmidt, the sidewalk had construction delays. It did not debut until July, by which point the fair had already begun. During the lead-up to the exhibition, the contract had been signed for 4,500 feet worth of moving walkways to carry visitors arriving via steamboats who might be tired from their travel. To that end, the walkway could be found along a long pier east of the Peristyle. The fare to ride the moving walkway was just five cents. It had a partition separating it into two different areas, one for people to stand and ride, or if they wanted to walk, and the other furnished with benches so people could sit and rest if they were tired. The sidewalk ran in a loop down the pier. It was made up of two different adjacent belts, one traveling at three miles an hour and one at six miles an hour. The slower belt existed to more easily access the faster one. The moving sidewalk ran until the fair closed in October. Though that ended the World's Columbian Exhibition, it wasn't the end of moving sidewalks. Silsby and Schmidt, who created Chicago's walkway, 
debuted another at the Paris exhibition just seven years later. It was referred to as Moving Pavement. It was a three kilometer loop made from wooden segments and received over seven million visitors. So naturally, after the popularity of these attractions, moving sidewalks started spreading. The first one to see commercial use was installed in Jersey City in 1954 in the Hudson and Manhattan Railroad Erie Station. The walkway was built by the Goodyear Company and dubbed the Speedwalk. It moved at one and a half miles per hour and went uphill at a 10% grade. Although it was removed a few years later, newspapers around the country, such as the Kansas City Star, hailed it as the beginning of a new era in transportation. Whether or not moving walkways brought in a new era of transportation is up for debate. But what we can say for sure from the 1960s is that the moving walkway was definitely here to stay in commercial use. In 1958, the first moving walkway in an airport was installed in Dallas Love Field Terminal. Other airports began following suit. The idea was convenient for any passengers needing to haul heavy luggage across long distances between terminals. For similar reasons, moving walkways can also be found in some public transit areas, covering long distances between subway lines or platforms. The first was in London's Waterloo and City Line in 1960. This particular walkway is still in use today. Even outside the transportation area, moving sidewalks can be found in museums, ski resorts, retail stores, theme parks, or anywhere that might require a lot of walking from patrons. Moving walkways have become a fixture in our current society, and it's funny to think that when they first debuted at the World's Columbian Exhibition, it was nothing more than a mere novelty to excite people's imagination. And now, you can find moving walkways in nearly every major city. They're a go-to design choice to cover large stretches of land or make an uphill walk easier. And who knows? Maybe they'll expand. There have been suggestions to integrate them further into our city, making that sci-fi future a reality. Whether or not this happens, one thing is for sure, the moving sidewalk has made its mark.